Hey everyone, this is a video of my e-bike conversion project. I've been looking at e-bikes lately and I'd like to have one, but I don't really want another bike in the garage that I have to maintain and store. And I had this 15 year old Trek that I really like. So I thought maybe this is a good candidate for a motor and I'm gonna give it a try. Now it's 15 years old, like I said, I'm the original owner and I really enjoy this bike. It has a front suspension fork, seat post suspension, twist grip shifting. It's just very comfortable, smooth, shifts like a dream, and it's fun to ride. But on most of my rides, I do use my road bike, so this one kind of gets neglected. So I thought, well, if I put a motor on it, that'll breathe a little more life into it, and I'll get out more on it. Now, I had several options for putting a motor on this bike. There's front hub motors, there's rear hub motors, and then there's mid-drive units. Now on the front, since it has this suspension fork, it's probably not strong enough to handle the additional weight of a motor and the torque that that motor can give. Plus, the gap here between the forks is not wide enough to accommodate a motor, so that's going to be out. Now, a mid-drive unit is pretty complicated and I don't really want to take all this apart so I'm not going to go that route. So what I did buy is a rear hub motor conversion kit. So I'll replace this entire wheel with a motorized wheel, mount the battery and all the controls and it should be good to go. Here are all the components for this project. We'll start with the rear hub motor wheel. This is from eBikeLing. This is 26 inch, uh, 500 watt, 36 volt. And also with the kit, there's a seven speed rear cassette, a motor controller, 22 amp. This is a LCD display screen torque arm, some other parts, a lot of other accessories, pedal assist sensor, nuts and bolts, cables. And I bought this battery from Unit Pack Power. This is 36 volt, 13 amp hour. And I'm going to mount that onto a rear luggage rack. And while I'm at it, a couple brand new tires. Okay, I've made a little bit of progress on the bike so far. Let me show you what I did. Uh, new tire on the front wheel. That was pretty easy to do. And of course, a new tire on the rear wheel. And the rear wheel is the motorized wheel that came with the kit. So you see that's fully installed. takes a little bit of extra thought on to doing it because each bike is different but um, it came with a seven speed cassette which just screws on it's real easy um, but the other bike or the other wheel had a eight speed cassette so what that meant was the chain wasn't quite lined up perfectly when I got it back together so I had to make some derailleur adjustments you can see the cable for the motor sticking out here. Also had to make some brake adjustments just to get everything lined up. And let me show you the other side. Now on the non-chain side is where I added the torque arm, which is highly recommended, especially on an aluminum frame bike. Okay, I've completed a couple more things on this bike project. I've installed the rear luggage rack and mounted to that the battery mounting bracket. And this is a quick release so I can slide the battery on and off this rack if I want to. 
And here's a cable for the battery. The controller is mounted here with a couple zip ties. And I put some foam in between the tube and the controller just to give it some, uh, keep the metal from contacting the metal parts and just wearing down. And I did that up here too on the battery rack. Also to prevent some vibration from getting to the battery. So I've got all the cables here now coming from the controller. And this is the pedal assist sensor. This is going to go directly to the control box. And I've got this zip tied here, and I'm not sure if this is going to hold. I might have to epoxy it in place or do something. Now this is the sensor ring, which has got a whole bunch of magnets all the way around it. Now this fits behind the crank here, and as this spins, the sensor picks it up and tells the motor that I'm pedaling and it's time to turn on the motor and give some assist. Now I've seen these pedal assist sensors in other kits where you're required to remove the crank and install it and put all that back together. But this one's pretty slick because it comes apart like that. And what you do then is you just put it around the crank axle there. Snap that back together. And then there's this locking ring which goes around the outside. Snaps into place like that. And you're done. Well, before I go any farther, it's time to do a system check. Since the major components are installed, I should make sure that all this works. So there's a maze of wires and cables here. They're just out of the way, but everything's connected. I just want to make sure everything works before I make them more permanent. So what I'll do now is switch on the battery and then turn on the system. You can see the display is set for pedal assist two. So now when I rotate the pedal, the motor will turn on. Doesn't take much. And there it goes. Just a quick revolution of the crank, and it was going 12 miles an hour. So that's good news. Everything is working. Okay, this bike is just about done. We've got everything in place. Cables are all routed where they need to go. Use a lot of zip ties because some of the cables are a little bit too long. I did add some epoxy to this magnet ring just to make sure it doesn't come loose during rides. And I'll show you the other side. And you can see the cabling here. This is the power cable to the hub goes up to the controller and then the front display cable is run underneath this tube and up to the display. There are a few things in the kit that I opted not to use and one is the throttle. I wanted to keep the bike a class one pedal assist only. I don't see myself ever needing a throttle 
and I want to get exercise while I'm riding even though it's an e-bike so left the throttle out and because of that I didn't need these extra brake handles uh, these have a built-in switch so if you were to hit the brakes the motor would cut off but since I'm not using a throttle all I really have to do is just stop pedaling and the motor shuts off so these items not going to use now the final step to any digital display is to remove the plastic film there we go now we're ready to road test hey it's a 35 degree January afternoon but I've got the e-bike build all finished and ready to take it for a ride. Okay, I'm pedaling right now with no assist. I'm going to keep pedaling at the same speed. It's Right now I'm going about 10 miles an hour. And I'll turn on the pedal assist and see what happens. There's level one. You can barely feel it. Level two, there we go. Quickly up to 12. Three. Now we're booking at about 15. Level 4. Ramped me right up to 19. So if I, I'm pedaling now and right up to 20 miles an hour. Working well. I'm going to back it down to level 2 giving me a little bit of an assist.